Hey guys, this is Sarah and my furry feline friend Raven. Say hi Raven. Say hello. The camera's rolling. Here's her underside. Yeah, it's okay baby. She's got a small patch of white here, but it's not as prominent anymore. Because her black fur just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. Alright, off you go. Okay, so you guys are sitting further back today because I wanted to show you this finished poncho. My best friend's birthday is two days after mine. And I've really been trying to get this poncho done for her because I still haven't gifted it to her yet. I work a full-time job and it is super crazy, usually around the first. So I've been things have been hectic. So I only get to crochet maybe a couple of two, three hours a day. Usually in the mornings. Um, some of my mornings I don't feel good because of my gastritis. My health issues are gonna be in a whole nother video, but I finally finished this. I used two complete packs of Picasso yarn. Project back fell over. The Picasso yarn. Let me let me get it out and show you. Hang on guys, hang on. The Picasso yarn I used was this one, but they are sold out. I was just on Ice Yarn's website an hour ago looking at some more cotton yarns. So the, the llama shirt will be involved in this video. That'll be coming up in a second. This Picasso yarn, it's a number four weight. It's 44% acrylic, 56% polyester, so it is super soft. It does have a halo on it. And... It's a 50 gram ball with 115 meters. I used a 6.5 millimeter hook, two entire packs of Picasso. The last two balls, so that would be, I mean I had 16 balls of Picasso because eight come in a pack, right? I saved the last two balls to do the neck. The pattern says to chain 100, but I thought that was way too much. So next time I make this poncho, I'm only going to chain 80. And then I just did three rows of single crochet around the neck and I had to do um, decreases to make the neck smaller. It was way too big and this is just a little heavy and over time of course the yarn is going to pull down on the neck area. Yarn has weight, right? So I went around the neck twice making decreases. Every fifth stitch was a, de was a decrease. So two single crochets together in one stitch and then to match the neck, I went around the very bottom with two rows of single crochet. There's the front side. Two rows of single crochet. And then in the corners, all four corners, I did a pico. Single crochet, chain two, make the pico, and then single crochet, keep growing single crochet into each stitch. And you can wear it square like this. Sorry, my camera's wiggling. You're on a little clip, wire, whatever those things are called, tripod. I have like a cell phone tripod. It's like a bandy wire thingy and I can adjust and point my camera, phone, angle. I can angle it however I want to and then it just, it's like a giant claw clip that clips around my phone. And I use it when I'm watching Netflix or a movie on my phone. I've got tons of um, digital movies on my cell phone. So you can wear it square like this or you can turn it. And you can wear it down, you can wear the point down the middle, like this. And I'm five foot nine. This goes down past my bottom. The arm length, I think, is a little long, because my friend is just a couple of inches shorter than me, but she'll love it. So this goes way past my knees and way past my bottom depending on how you want your neck to lay. So anyways, um, I've got you guys further back because I wanted to show you this poncho. And what it pretty much is, it's just one big giant granny square blanket with a hole in the center for the neck. That's pretty much all it is. And if you wanted to use this for a blanket, you probably still could. So in a pinch, she could use this as a blanket and it's huge. I will end up folding it like a blanket and gifting it to her. It's so pretty. So that's finally done. 
I'm going to gently move you guys up closer to me so I can sit down. Okay, hello. Okay, so I've been going over the cotton yarns, fuzzies, um, the cotton yarns that I purchased from Ice Yarns, trying to decide what cotton yarn I want to use to modify this shirt with. I have decided that I will be cutting these sleeves off because they are tight. And once I take whatever cotton yarn I choose, once I do the trimming, I'm just going to crochet some sleeves. And I like longer sleeves, so it'll be a few inches longer than this sleeve. But I'm going to use an open lace stitch. One of my favorite stitches. I'm actually currently working with um, Favorite from Ice Yarns, making just a simple shawl. I showed it previously in one of my videos. The chain stitch, open lace stitch, is pretty much two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Skip two stitches, repeat. And you do the two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet in the same stitch, and it's just a one row repeat. So I'm going to do one sleeve, and then I'll show you how to do the other sleeve. I'm going to just put trim around the bottom, and then I'm going to have the neck pretty much dotted. I'm not going to crochet, I'm not going to trim the neck, but I will have it dotted. And then on the sleeve, I'll have it, I'll have it like this, and I'll show you how to cut it off. Um, how to dot it, cut it off, all that stuff. I'll, I'll leave this one bare, and I'll show you how I did everything. Um, because right now I don't have any way to um, edit my video, so I want to make any tutorial I try to do, I want to have that video as short as possible so I'm not boring you guys with my crochet work. Um, so I made samples of the yarn so I could test out and see what I wanted. The first one I got was the Giglio cotton. It was $2 for a six pack. There's the number. They may still have some if you want to write this down. Six pack for two dollars, and it's a number one fine. But I tripled the yarn up, and I worked with three strands at once. And so I just made a three round circle. And it's it's polyester and cotton, but it's scratchy. It's um, sixty seven percent cotton, thirty three percent polyester, three hundred eighty five meters. So divide that by three if you're going to triple the yarn up to make it a number three weight. And I also used a four millimeter hook. This is one of the hooks that I bought in the set off Amazon for 16 bucks. Again, I'm a cheap ass. Sorry, but that's, that's me. I'm a cheap ass. Anything I buy, I'm going to make sure it's good quality and I'm going to make, I'm going to make sure it's a bargain. So there's metal all the way through the entire length of the hook. And then this is a, um, ergonomic silicone grip it's got a flat part on both sides so your thumb can can stay in place when you work and the size is actually indented can you see that yes you can see that I love that the size of the hook is indented because on the other side it's already mostly faded off so I'm really glad that they did that and if you can see this it is an inline hook and it has that point on the head that I like it makes it so much easier so much easier to go through your stitches it has that point on the head which I love in case your tension is too tight or if you have a stitch that's too small but most of the time especially if I take work with me a good tip anytime you take a project with you include a tinier size hook in your back so that if you do have trouble going into your stitch you can use that tinier hook you can pull up on the stitch more and then once you pull up on that stitch, you can put your original hook in and continue your work. I always keep a smaller hook with me when I'm working on a project. So I'm not going to go with the Giglio cotton because it's scratchy. It's soft, it's nice, but it's scratchy. So I think what I will use this for is I'm going to crochet up some granny rectangular um, kitchen towels, which I think would, would be fun. And I'm going to use this as an accent trim. Uh, the natural cotton. I used a four millimeter hook as well, which they also say is a three weight yarn. That's the natural cotton I used, just plain black. 100% uh, cotton, number three weight yarn, but it's very, very, very splitty. I don't like working with this at all. I struggled. If you can see closely, 
There are snags and little bitty fibers of the cotton sticking out that did not catch with the rest of the looping. It looks worse on the back side. So I don't like working with this. So then I went up to a five millimeter hook and I didn't have as much trouble, but the yarn was still splitting. I still had some trouble. There's the back side. But I'm going to be stitching that hook through this material. This material is very stretchable. It's very breathable, it's very light. The tag on the bottom says it's made out of 65% polyester, 35% cotton. Very lightweight summer shirt. So I don't want to use a big fat hook to go through this material because the bigger the hole, the higher chance you have of it tearing. So I want to use the smallest crochet hook as possible. So now I'm thinking of, I tried Alara. Where is my Alara? Let me just take this down and grab it. I used the gray just to test it out. The Alara is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. And that's the color I used. I'm contemplating using the lilac orchard, orchard, whatever, orchard, and this colorway of Alara. Because you can see a tiny bit of pink on one of the balls of yarn on the head, and then of course the nose is pink, and I think that would go well. This yarn actually feels comfortable. And I love how it works up. It's so easy to work up. It glides so smoothly over my hook, just like it's butter. It doesn't split. It's a number three weight yarn, four millimeter hook. Alara is awesome. I highly recommend buying Alara, especially if you like working with, with uh, cotton yarns. Um, but it does have acrylic. Acrylic can be warm. There's no acrylic in the shirt and it is a summer shirt. So then, I mean, this would be gorgeous. I would love to have this in just a plain, 100% cotton. If any of you ladies know where I can get this in like a bamboo or cotton, if you can include a link, that would be better. Or if you, you could just tell me where I could find it. So then I crocheted up a sample in this Lorena Colorful. Yarns that I have already purchased from Ice Yarns, I've ordered so much and I've got so much cotton now. I really don't wanna buy any more cotton, especially since I just ordered three more types of yarn to try not, not not successful, not great. So Lorena, let me see. I should have had this on a hanger. What do you guys think of the Lorena with this? Here is, where's my sample that I worked up? Where's my sample? I know I brought it over here, hang on. Did I lose it? Oh no. There it is, holy cow. <laughs> I was not completely prepared, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Here is the Lorena sample worked up. What do you think about this colorway with the colors in the llama shirt? I could use this for the trimming around the neck, around the hem of the, sh around the bottom hemming, and then to make the sleeves. What do you guys think? I have to lay it out and think about it, but I do like the colors in this yarn. It's the purple lilac shades. It's got a touch of turquoise and some yellow, which, you know, there's yellow on the llama shirt. And you see all these gorgeous colors in it, and there it is worked up. So, if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If I should use the Lorena, or if I should use the Alara Orchard. Um, Again, the Alara is 50 cotton, 50 acrylic, and the Lorena. I may go with the Lorena because I'm gonna do with that label. I think it's just a touch more cotton. 55% cotton, 45% acrylic. So the acrylic level is down. Let me hold this up again. I hope I'm not boring you guys. I'm really trying to decide if I want to do this one or if I want to use the plain solid color in Alara. I have not worked up a sample with the Alara. 
but I have worked up a sample in that gray color, which I really love. I could totally use the gray too. I just don't think it would look as great. But I think it would definitely look more eye-catching with the with the Lorena. I'm leaning towards this more than I am the the uh, the Lorena. But let me know what you guys think, because um, I really want to get this tutorial out soon. Speaking of tutorials, I'm not going to do it this video because this video is already halfway over. Um, I can only do three 33 minute videos because of my cell phone until I get better equipped with a better camera. Um, let me grab it real quick. I was watching Jennifer's channel on Cinnamon Stitches and I'm going to tag her with this because I want to ask her too if she can do a close up of this. Okay, right, just to the right of Jennifer's head, you see her little heart. It says Cinnamon Stitches, sub subscribe, whatever she's got. It's on her little bookshelf right back there. And then right directly on her heart, there is a small group of brightly colored, what looks like yarn hanks. And they were like, just they just look, look like small little twirls of yarn. And that gave me an idea to make something like this. And add something to put it over your finger with. And guess what this is? 100% cotton cat toy. I had the idea, that's that's how my brain works. If I see something that looks interesting, it catches my eye, I can have an idea of what that could be. I'm like, that looks like a, it could be like a cat toy. Like a bunch of curly ribbons. And, and then, because cats love ribbon, oh my gosh. Take some ribbon yarn and crochet a cat toy with that, a stringy cat toy with that. Oh my gosh, they will go nuts. Now, Raven loves this. She's played with it some, but she's 14 years old. She's not a kitten. She's still playful, but not as active as a kitten is. You hang this over a kitten's little face. You, you know, run it across the floor back and forth. Yeah, your kitten will go nuts all day long over this until they pass out. So I will do a tutorial on how to make this. This took me like 15 minutes to make it. So I can make a quick little short tutorial for this once I clear my table. I will show you the yarn I used. I will show you the size hook I used and all that stuff. And it's so easy. You don't have to be precise on the lengths of these curls. I just, I didn't even count the stitches. I just randomly chained a bunch of numbers and then I, and then I um, single crocheted three in each chain and that's how you get these curls. And I made a loop because you know how sometimes you play with a cat and the cat will accidentally snag it away from your fingers. I made this little finger loop so that to prevent that. So I could hang on to it and, and keep her attention with it. Or you could actually tie it onto a stick. Yeah, um, I have one over here. I keep it in my whip basket so it's right nearby whenever she wants to play. You could tie it onto one of these. And you can buy these at the dollar store, Dollar General, Family Dollar. They're like, I don't find, I don't buy these more than three dollars. This is already catching Raven's attention. Sometimes she wants to play, sometimes she just wants to walk around and do her own thing. So um, that's all I have for now. I'm going to try to get this tutorial done. And this is just going to be a practice t tutorial to see how I need to lay things out so I can prepare for making the tutorial on this modification. So um, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me and bearing with me on how these videos are presented to you guys. Um, thank you so much for your patience. And um, thank you again for subscribing. Please like the video if you like any of my content. Um, and subscribe. Tell your Yarny friends and share it with your other communities on your other platforms. Um, thank you guys so much. You'll have a great crochet day.